I said no more strifes. No more strifes. No more strifes until at least that amount of days. But with great power comes great responsibility. And so, my friends, we must forge another legendary weapon. Yes, a tier zero with an afterburner. And that is because we have been entrusted with this. This is, I'm not certain if it's the prototype or if it is just the first one off the line or what exactly it is, but uh, this comes to us all the way from, I want to say, Taipei City. I want to say it's Taiwan, but I'm trying to, it is indeed from Taiwan. So we have this from my friend over at Argus Modworks. Now, if you remember when I did my top body kits for the Strife, one rose to the top, and that is the Swordfish Kit. It turns the Strife into a bullpup machine, a bullpup beast, as it were, and this is no exception. This is the next iteration of that, and the packaging is actually quite handsome. Take a look at that, guys. So this is a little baggie of hardware, and then let's pull these pieces out and we'll talk about them. This is clearly some front ends. I guess you can choose between blue or black. Now, this is blue uh, because there's a theme of sorts, and this blaster or this kit is called the Leviathan. So we've got this, which is going to be the motor cover. This is obviously the back end for the blaster itself. And this is our front end here, which uh, I think it should be easy to just slide this panel off right here. So you guys can actually see how this works if, uh, if I know what I'm doing. There's definitely a way to get in here so that you, there we go. So this entire bit slides off and you can see that this is where the switch rest sits and then the trigger is inside so that is pretty cool just like printing two parts that work like this is incredible that's almost injection molding levels of precision so so far we've got this and this but what makes it special what makes it not just a swordfish right why do we have to build a tier zero well that's because this is the front end now as i mentioned you can see here that this is going to slot in and then this is going to sandwich on top but inside here in addition to all of the trigger mechanisms and the barreling material and the battery cover and that's it we have what he's calling the leviathan core and that is an afterburner that through this slot here specifically designed for i think an xt60 you can choose whether or not you want your blaster to be a two stage or a one stage so again like in general, a swordfish kit. But a swordfish kit, where once you have your strife installed, you can choose whether you want just the first stage or if you also want to drop in this core. Now, what could possibly be worthy of something this special if not these? I've talked about these before. The Nosferatu runs on these. These are honestly some of the most impressive motors in the game. These are Blade 180s. So we have blades. I think we should be able to fit a 180 size motor inside here. Nothing to it but to do it. I already know what the first stage is going to be. We've got to prep a strife shell. We've got to get some special parts in from New Zealand, and we will talk about those next. But uh, let's start delving in, and I guess the easiest place to start, because starting is the hardest step, is to take our core and install our blades for our afterburners. Because when you run these things on a 3S, man, do they sing. Let's go. So I started this project a long while ago. I did a bunch of hydro work and I sourced a ton of unique components and it was all designed to best take advantage of a kit that my friend uh, sent me over from Argus Modworks. It's the Leviathan kit and it is so, so incredibly cool. I felt like I had to take an Atlantis theme with the build and I'm hoping that I still have segments for it, but I got so busy uh, this year with Toy Fair and Epic Nerf Battles and other obligations that I did not have time to complete the circuitry. So I had wired up like LEDs for the cage and I think I'd done a couple of looms for the cage, but I hadn't like finished everything and fed it because it has a very unique motor setup. So I sent it over to SCNC 
NC regular Valor Nerf Works, who I believe I can actually check, is up in North Carolina. He does a bunch of HVZ up there, and uh, he seemed to have the uh, the desire and the wherewithal and the ability to, to stitch together even my crazy homebrew circuitry. So it's time to uh, to check it out and see how uh, how he did. If if it was possible indeed to um, to make method out of my madness. This is a crazy packaging system. So it appears that in here he has included uh, a couple of raw strifes that I sent over as well, kind of for future projects. All right, so very safely packaged for its journey, we have a fully mummified Mabel Mock. And I haven't seen this guy in months since I finished the hydro work. So hopefully it turned out exactly kind of in the vision that I had for it. But that's the cool thing about collaborating with other people is that they get to kind of add their own uh, creative vision to it. And we'll see what we wound up with here. Oh yeah. All right guys, so it took me a second to like really parse through all the work that had been done on this. Uh, at one point the kit was dropped, but that led to a small fracture, which honestly has been repaired with solvent weld. Um, there's a lot, a lot going on here, including a full auto kit, uh, full MOSFET, so there's five motors total. Up here we have Fang revamps powering Instatontos, and then up here in our super sexy afterburner kit, we have OG original Fangs uh, powered with uh, Cyclones from Containment Crew. They're End War Special Edition Cyclones, and you can see how that kind of bumps up for the afterburner effect. The Mabel Mock itself is a full bullpup kit and housed in a strife, and you can see through that window all the good stuff going on. Now, one of the coolest things is this is a completely unique Containment Crew cage, which gives you this awesome glow effect as though this thing is coming back to life. Now, if you have the cage in, they both have to be hooked up and ready to rev, but you can easily remove the uh, the afterburner. So the, the full setup is for like complete performance and lets you deliver hits for like SCNC type wars or like uh, even possibly NIC wars because there's a lot of power in this particular dual stage. However, uh, it would be perfect for HVZ with an empty Leviathan kit just using these Instantantos for ultra quick fast spin up times and the Fang revamps at a single stage with this spacing. Now, the LED work is very subtle and better viewed in the dark, so I'll show you that in a moment, but there's one LED down here in the bandolier attachment point. I believe that there's one in the mag release down here, and then there's one illuminating this empty battery tray as the battery now lives as far back in the stock as it possibly can. Now, there was a point where I believe Big Zen Z had sent over a, uh, a matching custom unique, and all of these resin parts are completely unique. I'm super duper grateful to have this almost aquamarine blue green translucent battery tray. Uh, translucent, you, you can't see it, but there's like a trigger and a rev trigger, as well as the mag release and this attachment point. But I think that we had a jam door at some point. Unfortunately, that got lost somewhere in translation. So Valor uh, printed a black one, which is quite nice. It fits in with the overall aesthetic of the Leviathan Hydro Dip and my, uh, my color choices involved in this. So I wanna fire it for you inside, then I wanna show you how good it looks in the dark, and then I'll actually take it outside and put it over a chronograph. But uh, just a real quick burst. That full auto kit is delivering plenty of darts per second for any, any specific engagement and has relatively quick control fire so you can easily uh, do one at a time if you so desire. But overall, a very beautiful kit, a really cool combination of a lot, a lot of different parts manufacturers and two creators uh, to come together into this, this very, very interesting, very unique build. So let's kill the lights real quick so you can take a peek. So in low light settings for HVZ, you guys can see the battery door glows, the cage has a very small, subtle glow, kind of menacingly, and then this back end is clearly illuminated. But the real trick is when it starts revving up, the three triple UV LEDs embedded into the custom containment crew cage do this. And 
so those are intrinsically wired into the loop circuit, which means that they pulse to life and then fade out of life with uh, the rev switch, which is really, really a cool effect. Let's take it outside and do some chronograph work. All right, guys, I'm convinced Georgia just can't make up its mind. Uh, it's so cold now, but it was so hot earlier. So despite how poorly dressed I am, we have brought out the Mabel Mock and the Chronograph. We're using some, uh, some natural and ambient light to get you pretty accurate readings. This is currently in dual stage form, which means that it's got both sets of cages inside. And we're gonna fire a few over, see what kind of, uh, what kind of performance we get. And then I've got a screwdriver and we'll pop this cage out and show you what it looks like in single stage. So uh, just before we do that, like ultra ergonomic, bull pups are so, so sweet. Like just a really, really cool uh, profile and blaster for, uh, for a strife to become almost like a pseudo perfectly sized Raven. So let's see what kind of numbers we we can get as we stagger single shots. 157. So, got a couple of outliers there. Uh, everything from 176 all the way down to a 130 something in there. It seems like the follow-up shots are a little bit trickier. It becomes kind of a spray and pray. But what I'm really interested in is if we can lock it into that lower uh, trajectory here by uh, removing the afterburner cage, which is a proprietary cage. You guys will get a good look at how this works. The cage itself is proprietary to the Leviathan kit from Argus. And then the motors are of course old school fangs, which I don't think get uh, manufactured too terribly much even <laughs> anymore, even though they are like distinctively very, very torquey. And while they're really, really cool, uh, coming in here and removing the single XT60, inside lets me pull the entire cage assembly out, uh, complete with those sweet, sweet end war, uh, original end war edition uh, flywheels. Set that aside, and now we should have a clean shot straight through this guy. So let's go ahead and fire it without the afterburner real quick here and see what we've got going on. And it looks like we floated everywhere from an 86, because again, just funky, funky outliers with this setup all the way up to 124, 127, and then underneath. So this custom cage the containment crew whipped up for me is amazing. It's doing exactly what I needed. It A, illuminates in a monstrous fashion, but also gets us just under that, uh, that end war threshold for HVZ performance with a quick spin up time, but it's starting to rain. What the heck, Georgia? Why? <laughs> this was my one window to film no all right so uh hydro work by me final assembly by valor uh logos by uh i think addy of foam blast um filmed by the uk argus mod works with complete uh custom drac nameplate so sexy thank you so much uh motors are both iterations of fangs which are crazy cool uh battery from hobby king full parts list in the description box below it's getting really wet let's go inside thank you guys so much for watching as always much love to Roderick out <laughs>